Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. I'm back. Yes, it's me, Jim Hall from 2953 Analytics, here once again to fill your brains with the latest automotive knowledge, news, and info. Let's get to it, shall we? Last week, we reported that sales of electric and plug-in vehicles plummeted in September. And in an effort to boost sales, Toyota has cut the price of the Prius plug-in. The 2014 model carries a base sticker of just over $30,000, which is two grand less than before. And the upmarket advanced model's price was trimmed by over $4,600. In addition, the car also qualifies for $2,500 federal tax credit. The Prius plug-in is sold only in 15 states, mostly along the east and west coast, and the 2014 models will start arriving at dealers next month. As we reported earlier in the week, Ford sales in China have surged this year, and the company is on pace to outsell Toyota and Honda in the country. Now the Detroit News reports that Ford is considering further expansion in China. Even though the company is currently building at five plants in the country, it's debating whether that's enough because there are forecasts that predict annual sales in China will hit 32 million, yes, 32 million units by the end of the decade. In addition to the expanded capacity, Ford is also considering creating a China-only brand with its partner, Chang'ang. There'll be a new award given out at this year's Detroit Auto Show. Organizers of the event have teamed up with one club to honor the best car ads of the year on an annual basis. The winners will be graded in four categories. Now follow me on this. The first one is print and outdoor combined. Then television and video, followed by interactive and finally experiential. The jury panel will be made up of the top directors in the advertising industry as well as automotive journalists. Autoline got the chance to drive the new Chevy Malibu yesterday and here's a look at what's new. The company decided to drop e-assist for the 2014 model in favor of a less expensive and less complicated, more compact 12-volt start-stop system. But it did require a few unique components, like a larger battery, an auxiliary 12-volt motorcycle battery, a second electric transmission pump, and torque reaction engine mounts all in an effort to reduce the harshness on restart. The car is powered by the same upgraded 2.5 liter four-cylinder engine that's used in the Impala. Like the engine in the larger Chevy, this one also has fuel-saving features like direct injection and intake valve lift control. Before the car shuts down the engine, it first monitors things like proper engine and transmission temperature, climate control operation, and state of charge of the restarting battery. As I mentioned, Autoline got some time behind the wheel of one, and after nearly 100 miles of driving the stop-start system, it only kicked in three times. It seems that the state of charge requirement really plays a large factor in how often the start-stop function actually works. So if you have the AC on, you're in heavy stop-and-go traffic, or have something plugged into a power port, we wouldn't expect the start-stop feature to be all that active. But when the system does engage, it's pretty seamless. The 2014 Malibu is rated at 25 miles per gallon city and 36 on the highway. It carries a base price of around $23,000, including destination charges, and it's at dealerships right now. And in other Chevy news, if you're the owner of a fifth generation Camaro and looking to upgrade it, oh boy, well, we got some good news for you. Chevrolet Performance has released factory engineered performance parts and accessories, most of which will not void the vehicle warranty when installed by a Chevy dealer. The list includes stronger independent rear axle, a suspension package, giant front and rear brake package, high performance cylinder heads and cams. A lot of the gear was developed for the eye-wateringly quick Camaro ZL1. The upgrades are available for both V6 Camaros and V8 powered SS models to be purchased directly from the dealer. Coming up next, a look at self-parking technology from Nissan. Dow Automotive Systems, driving solutions in automotive, commercial transportation, and aftermarket with innovative products like Betamate structural adhesives. Lighter, stronger, safer. DowBetamate.com. As you know, Nissan has announced that it will have a fully autonomous car ready for sale by the end of the decade. In the meantime, the company is showing off a self-parking version of the Leaf, and AutoLine recently got a chance to see how it works. Take a look. Hi, this is Andy Christensen. I'm from the Nissan Technical Center in Farmington Hills, Michigan, and today I'd like to demonstrate our autonomous remote parking vehicle. So today we're simulating a shopping mall type scenario. The driver has stepped out of the vehicle and he will use the key fob to initiate the process and the vehicle will start and begin to search for a parking space.
As you'll see, we have someone in the driver's seat purely for safety, but he will not touch the pedal or the wheels as the vehicle searches for a parking space. We're using laser scanners on each side of the vehicle to identify the spacing of the vehicles and determine that we are in a parking location. It's identified that a vehicle is pulled out of the parking space, so now we'll proceed and again scan the parking space to confirm that it's adequate size for the vehicle to park. The vehicle stops and confirms and then proceeds and we'll actually back into the parking space. Backing in provides the maximum maneuverability for the tightest parking spaces. And if the driver were to come out to the vehicle, the driver would purely have to pull forward rather than backing out of the parking space. So as we back in, come to a stop, and the vehicle will shut down, honk as an indication, and remain parked. So the driver initiated the recall for the car, and the car will now return to the exact location that it started from. Again, we're not using any onboard map data. It's purely using the sensors onboard the vehicle to navigate the parking lot and return to that exact location where the driver requested the parts, requested the car to park from. And the vehicle stops and the driver gets back in the car. Make sure you tune in for tonight's episode of AutoLine After Hours. John is joined by three of his fellow colleagues to discuss nominees for the 2014 North American Car and Truck of the Year Awards. So stay tuned for some of the best insider discussion in the industry tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. And that's a wrap for today. I'm Jim Hall from 2953 Analytics. Thanks for watching and everybody have a great day.